So I was back in the room, already forgot about that creepy man from the alleyway as I discovered skipping wouldn't let me materialize inside of things. Luckily, I had Melia draw me a bath, even if she had to wake every other servant in the inn. I was definitely not going to bed smelling as I did, stupidly. I hadn't noticed but Tut was gone until I was in the bath. So I went back to my room and... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 32 A Bath and a Reputation Kitty jumped off Nadek's shoulders as she lost her balance from appearing halfway on and off the bed. She picked herself up from the floor at the same time Milia came through the side door, a door giving access to Nadek's room from the tiny attached servant's hall. Nadek had felt disgusted at it. She'd suggested paying for a full room further, but everyone who heard had regarded her with shock. Mistress, are you all right? She said she was fine and asked Mila to get a bath filled. When the tall woman said she wasn't certain if it was possible in the middle of the night, Nedek implored her to take a deep breath. After Milia stopped gagging, Nedek told her to wake other servants if she must. Just make sure to pay them sufficiently for their troubles, she added, not wanting to be too much of an inconvenience. When Melia left, Nedak paced the small open space she had. Her legs yearned to sit, but she didn't want the bedsheets to reek of vomit. The oddity of having a bath drawn in the middle of the night would give her a reputation of being odd and demanding. Fine, she thought. That's the role I'll play. They decided to forgo the wealthy merchant ruse and instead do a visiting noblewoman act, even though she hadn't been certain how to act as a noblewoman. But it required no merchanton skills, which was good because Nadek had none of that. You lucky little thing, she mumbled towards Kitty, who had curled up on the bed to sleep. Nadek resumed her pacing. At least one question had been answered now. If she'd skipped somewhere and misaimed, say, in the middle of a wall, she wouldn't materialize inside of it. The knowledge made her feel more at ease with the magic. About half an hour later, Melia walked in to announce the bath was ready. Nedek walked to the door, but a tall woman kept standing in the doorway. Mistress, you're naked. You can't go out like that. Nidek snorted. Of course I can. I doubt there's anyone awake to see me. Come on, move aside. Make sure you close the door to keep Kitty in. Where do I go? Uh, down the hallway. But, mistress... Not completely insensitive to walking through a public hallway in the nude, Nidek picked up her pace, a jar doors with dancing flames and shadows behind them. Peeking eyes and whispers proved her wrong. Plenty of people were awake. Struggling inwardly, she kept a straight back, merely adding to my weird reputation. The thought made it easier to maintain perfect composure. The sigh of relief upon entering the bathing chamber was not only caused by the wonderfully hot steam rising from the tub. She eased into the water, sinking in chin deep. The tub was large enough to have her whole body submerged. It bespoke of the inn's wealthiness. Her muscles relaxed one by one. She loved showers, but taking a bath was on a completely different level. Her eyes closed, her mind drifted. This 
was the first time in more than two weeks she allowed herself to relax completely. Not counting the week she had been in the blackie-induced sleep. So much had happened. She'd almost spilled everything to Patat when they first met. Water splashed over the sides of the tub as she sat upright. Patat! Where was he? He hadn't been in the room when she returned. Milia! She barked. Where's Patat? The servant woman cringed where she stood a meter away from the tub. She fidgeted her fingers as she spoke with hesitation. I apologize, mistress. I do. I tried. I really did. But I couldn't keep him back. It, it, uh, them? She choked on her words, trying to come up with a proper pronoun for the mythical creature. What happened? Where did he go? Ah, uh, uh, I, I don't know, mistress. He said he'd been locked up long enough. He wasn't going to stay locked up again. When I refused to open the door, his voice changed. It became so very sweet. He said he merely wanted to look around the city to see what has changed. He promised me he'd stay out of sight. No one would see him. And then, ah, she faltered and lowered her eyes. She continued in a whisper. I moved away from the door and opened the window. He flew out. I don't know where to. I also don't know why he didn't open the window himself. The news brought new tension in Nadek's muscles. Too much for the hot water to relieve. There wasn't anything she could do about Patat at that point, she thought. So she tried to enjoy the rest of her bath time. She couldn't. She left the water before it cooled down. Melia offered her a bathing gown to wear for the walk through the hallway. This time, Nedak accepted. It had been a little bit too uncomfortable before. Back in the room, she unhooked the rushlight from beside the door and used it to light the one sitting on the small desk in the corner. With that extra light, she saw the spread out pages. Kitty jumped on Nedak's lap the moment she sat down. Nedak glanced at Melia, who'd put the door light back. Extinguish it and then you can go to bed if you want. I won't need you anymore and you should probably get some rest. And I'm sorry for yelling at you earlier. It would have been better if you'd immediately told me about Patat. But I understand. It's probably my fault with my demands for a bath. She wasn't actually sorry for asking for a bath. She knew she'd needed it. But sometimes the reality doesn't matter when apologizing. Mistress, it's all right. You should never apologize to me. That is not how a noble woman treats a servant. Besides, you truly were <laughs> in need of a clean. At least... There was no mud this time. Nedek snorted. You should have seen my carpets. I also wasn't kidding when I said it felt as if I had mud everywhere. Days later, mud would still appear in areas I was sure I'd washed thoroughly before. Yes, I know what you mean. Milia chuckled. Madame Michaud wasn't impressed when she found flakes of mud on her slice of bread. That made Nedak laugh out loud. She'd forgotten how well she'd gotten along with this woman, even though they hadn't spent much time together. About a week, perhaps? Longer than Nedak had expected the rescue to take. She wanted to ask Melia, Fluetza, what had happened after that. Why she'd stayed with Krydek and Steetum. 
and as a servant nonetheless. Nedak knew she hadn't been a servant before, not at all. But she also knew this wasn't the time nor the place for such a conversation. There were other matters to concern herself with. But Tot, what trouble are you getting yourself into? It didn't feel as if Patat would take the risk of discovery for no reason, not merely to go sightseeing. Nidek hesitated. What did she really know about him? He was an old and mythical creature. He should have common sense. Was he old? Nidek doubted herself. What had Craddock said? Fifty-something years since her brother had put Patat in the tree? So, Patat was at least that age, but how old had he been before that? And, most importantly, what is considered old for a Gorok? For all Nadek knew, he could be nearing the end of his life, or he could still be a teenager. Sometime during Nadek's musings, Melia bid her good night. It prompted Nedek enough to snap out of it and have a look at what was spread out on the desk. The contents of her parents' boxes. She had been so keen to open them when entering the city. But by the time they had found the inn and had settled in their room, Nedek hadn't wanted to deal with it. Once a procrastinator, Always a procrastinator. That was something her mom had told her, half in jest, half serious. She'd said it wasn't hopeless. There were ways to push through the apathy invoked by the task ahead. She even had invented a ten-step process to conquer the need to procrastinate. Oh, mom, Nidak stroked Kitty getting comfort out of the ritual. You always went above and beyond to help me, even if I was being a lazy piece of shit. Nidak pushed through the well to go to bed and examined the sheets of paper on the desk, but Tut seemed to have been busy ordering them. From what she could see, most of them were written by her mom. She had a terrible handwriting. Nedek and her mom and dad often joked about how it was a secret script only they could read. Now she wondered whether it was intended as such. Occasionally she could see her dad's flowing, beautiful script. It befitted a king. Nedek could see that now. What was that? One of the sheets stood out. The type of paper differed from the others, the text on it short and obviously scribbled in a hurry. Dear Nady, this is a quick extra note. We do not know if it has any significance, but I insist that we add it to the box. Hopefully we can do it without Craddock noticing us. Oh, how I hope you will never have to learn of these boxes. We have discovered something almost unbelievable. I shall not tell my sister yet. Not until we are certain. I have already piled enough burden on poor Crydek. I do not want her to worry for no reason. Somewhere in these notes, I talk about our brother and his death. Your father and I now have strong suspicions, incredible as it sounds, that he is still alive. Yodak is alive. Possibly. We will investigate more, and when we are certain, we will update the box officially and notify my sister, your aunt. May you never see this note. We love you with all our hearts. Stunned, Nedak sat back. Yodak, her uncle, could still be alive. That must have been the reason Patat flew out. But where to? Oh, no. 
Turning in her seat while cradling Kitty, she looked out of the window. There, in the corner, she could see the outline of the large surrounding walls of the massive building on the hill. It made the most sense. The castle. That's where Patat went. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 32, A Bath and a Reputation. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe. She should just... She should... She should... She'd suggested, she'd suggested paying for a fellow, well, fellow room. <laughs> she said she was fine and asked Melia to get a bath filled. After Melia stopped gagging, after Melia stopped gagging, just make sure you pay them. Bloody hell. Just realized, I just realized I hadn't plugged in my, uh, Headphones. I was like, oh, it sounds so weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot too. <laughs> anyway, Nedek, <clears throat> Nedek reads you. Shit, what's going on here? Ah! Good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Down to Hal War. So much had happened. The tall servant woman cringed. I keep saying she's tall. It's a little bit. What had happened? What had happened? Why can't I do this? Hey, Waffle. Hey, buddy. There were other matters to concern herself with. Concern myself with. It is such a fool. Type of paper deferred. Deferred. The pa- the type of. P- Turning in her seat while Cradle and you have been listening to Nedek, chapter 30. Which chapter is this? You have been listening to Nedek, chapter 31. No, shit. It's 32. Doo-doo-doo-doo.